Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to Radio Dead Air tonight, John Burkhart, Chaos D1 of MMO Grinder, filling in for Tear tonight. Which I should have been doing today, but eh. <laughs> literally I have to do the episode tomorrow. Like, ah, fuck it. Eh, fuck it. Who even cares anymore, right? <laughs> I've had to, like, scramble three times just because how often the episode that I've been doing has gotten canceled. <laughs> because, like, the game just either shuts down or switches over. And I'm like, oh, this is just getting to be fun now. <laughs> so pretty much the, the you have a game. You're like, oh, this would be a good episode. I got all my writing and shit done and wait, it's gone. Yeah. There would be times where I had an intro plan for the game. And there would just be like, mm, we're going to. Oh, well, the one I wanted to do was Lego minifigures. Mm hmm. And it's just some stupid little kitty game with the Lego figures, and you run around kind of like Diablo with Legos, really. <laughs> and then the co company that runs it decides, ah, you know what, we're just going to make you have to pay for it now, and we're going to shut it down for the two weeks that I would have been looking at it. <laughs> the exact two weeks. Like, I think it came back online two days ago, and I'm like, well, good, that gave me a lot of time. <laughs> Was going to do an episode, but instead, just going to be two, uh, two, 30 minutes of me doing this. I have footage of the game, too. I'm like, here's this useless crap I fucking recorded. <laughs> Everything's an adventure now. Ah, uh, that is internet. Internet <laughs> is an adventure. And not the happy fun kind. So, it's your first time joining us for the nonsense. Yes. Oh, I hope you're prepared, because we've got some special shit tonight. Is this prepared enough? Yeah! Some extras. Yeah. Okay. You're 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 right where you need to be. You got you've got the mindset down. You're you know you're right you're right where you need to be for this. Let's get the intro rolling. Each week, Catherine and the Radio Dead Air audience. Go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring it back here for a little segment we like to call. What the fuck is wrong with you? And, well, this week, uh, something we, we frequently do on this show, since we look at the media so often, is we look at how the media fucks up, especially when they do so in spectacular fashion. And I think you may be aware of this story, because it kind of went around a ways. Um, obviously, uh, marriage equality went through. Big deal. Everyone's talking about it. Pride parades this weekend were off the fucking chain. CNN. I think I know where this is going. You know where this is going. Continue. CNN covered one of these pride parades in London. However, they covered it in typical CNN fashion. By which I mean to say the most sensationalist bullshit, non fact checking shit. In yes. CNN claimed. Come on. One thing I love about Windows 8 is it, it assumes that if you move a window up to the top of the screen, that suddenly you want it on the entire screen? No. <laughs> Calm down, Windows. Making it convenient. You know what was really convenient? That button that said full screen that I could yeah. press. CNN claimed to spot an ISIS flag at a gay pride march. It was actually a drawing of sex toys. On, C on Saturday, CNN devoted an entire segment to what it called, quote, an ISIS flag among a sea of rainbow colors. CNN's International's Lu Lucy Paul describes spotting the flag at a gay pride march in London. She pronounced it to be, quote, an attempt to mimic the ISIS flag, the black and white flag with distinctive lettering. Upon seeing the flag, she reported it to nearby police. She noted, however, that if you look at the flag closely, you'll see it's Quote, clearly not Arabic. All is correct. The flag is not in Arabic. It is, in fact, not any language. Rather, it consists of crude drawings of sex toys. This it's like the police were involved is that's my best. I, I love I love this. She 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 goes to she drags the police over and goes, look at that. And the police are probably like, yeah, lady, it's dildos. What? Have you never seen one of those before? 
Or is she saying that the Arabic language looks like dicks when it's written? <laughs> That's just wrong. You see, can't be doing that shit. Now, if if it did, the Quran would be a lot more entertaining to read, <laughs> don't you think? <laughs> no, no, because I mean, <laughs> I like that in the channel. Uh, reporter, do you speak butt plug? Uh, <laughs> And to make this even better, Lucy Paul got on Twitter when everyone was calling her out for this. And I watched the segment. They were all like, oh, my God, this is this is shocking. This this is it possibly is it terrorist? Is the gays terrorist? Is is it? And she got and people on Twitter went, no, you silly bitch. That's a butt plug. <laughs> and her response was she when they, they said, look what you reported. She said, I reported no such thing. Even though they had her on live international fucking television recorded reporting on the butt plug flag. What? And, and, yeah, and then and the, the reason I can't show you the video is CNN yanked that shit offline. Proud. Journalistic integrity. The age-old internet tradition of delete fucking everything. <laughs> that means it never happened. Listen, I don't know what you're talking about. It's like one video, no, I... Uh huh? Was... You're talking to me about butt plugs. You're the weird one, not me. <laughs> you're you're the strange... I'm, I did everything right. Shut up. Uh, well, we have even more entertaining nonsense to come. Um, next one's from Canada. Oh, Canada. Um, have you ever dealt with police choppers before or seen these? Never, never had. Mm, probably not. I've, I've, I've occasionally seen like you know something's going down. There's a police chopper. Big ass fucking spotlight, especially at night, which is, you know, I'm sure it's great for finding suspects, but if you're trying to drive, that shit's a little distracting. Um, and, but no, I would expect that to be the only distraction I would get from a police chopper. It's not. Um, Winnipeg police, sorry for X-rated chopper talk overheard by public. A Winnipeg woman has heard two police officers in a helicopter broadcast comments about oral sex. Comments they made without realizing the public address system was on. And she says she wants them disciplined. Um, Just remembering fucking... Uh Chief Wiggum on The Simpsons, finding <laughs> the spotlight in Homer and Marge's pool while they're skimming, skinny dipping, going, ah, c c remain calm, continue swimming naked. Oh, Aww. come on, continue. <laughs> Brandy Armstrong said she and her husband were sitting outside their West End home about 9.30 p.m. when the chopper flew above them. Armstrong said she heard one officer ask, quote, can you give me a blowjob? She said the other officer replied, quote, you have too much body hair. So imagine you're sitting on your back porch, a police chopper flies overhead. Can you give me a blowjob? That depends. How far down does it reach from there? <laughs> I mean, it's just... Hell, in America, the worst thing you have to worry about is if they'll shoot you. <laughs> in Canada, they want you to suck the dick. <sighs> Rumor out uh, parts of the officer's conversation was quickly posted on Twitter and then spread further across social media. <laughs> I love this. This is this is like across the city of Winnipeg. Twitter lit up with like the cops is asking us for blowjobs. What do we do? <laughs> I don't I I just it is different. 
<laughs> it's a different approach to law enforcement. I would think. Well, you know what? If you, if you're committing a crime, you kind of don't expect the police to turn to you and say, "This is the police. Can you give me a blowjob?" Do I say no? Is that this? I don't remember. This is part of the Miranda warnings. You have the right to remain silent. Can you give me a blowjob? <laughs> Somebody Gav in the channel says, fuck man, I'm out on probation. I guess I gotta. <laughs> Shit. I don't know. <laughs> oh well. Um Okay, got some more stuff. Uh have you ever gone in for like surgery or something and they've had to put you under? Um uh, can't say I've had the privilege. I've I've had them do this. I did, they did this when they took out my wisdom teeth. They took they did this when mm -hmm. uh, they gave me an endoscopy. When I was thirteen, they had to take a cyst out of my leg. So I've had to go under. And it's, it is a freaky experience because you for one second they're telling you count down backwards from ten, and then the next second you're waking up and there's you know suddenly there's shit in your mouth or you're bleeding or just. It's, it's disconcerting as fuck. So already we're talking about a very unpleasant experience. The ultimate trust exercise, really. <laughs> it's funny you should say that. Oh, also, I don't know where we're going, but I know where we're going, you know? Yeah. Phone recording of anesthesiologist mocking patient leads to $500,000 verdict. Now, what happened was this guy went in for um, a colonoscopy, which is one of the least pleasant experiences in any human life. If you don't know what a colonoscopy is, they take a camera on a tube and they shove it up your butt. It's not fun. Just wait for the Oculus Rift version later. <laughs> Man, the 3D textures in this colon are great. <laughs> 4K is really coming in handy here. He was going in for colonoscopy, and he wanted to be sure after he came out, you know, he thought he'd be groggy and whatnot, so he wanted to be sure about any instructions they gave him for medication or how he had to treat himself afterwards, you know, standard kind of stuff they tell you after you come back out. Well, he decided he'd turn on his smartphone and hit record, so just in case if he was loopy when he came out of the, the anesthesia, he'd be fine. Well, here's what he recorded. When an assistant told Ingram that DB said he got queasy watching a needle go into her arm, Ingram said, this is the anesthesiologist, said, quote, Well, why are you looking then, retard? That's some professionalism. When the assistant pointed out D.B. had a rash, Ingram told her, quote, if she rubbed up against it, she might get some syphilis on your arm or something, and said, it's probably tuberculosis in the penis, so you'll be all right. Ingram mocked the amount of anesthetic required to sedate the patient, and Shaw followed up with another comment that another doctor they knew would, quote, eat him for lunch. She also called him, quote, a big wimp, saying... People are into their medical problems. They need to have medical problems. I call it the Northern Virginia sy syndrome. Here, it's holier than thou. Too much internet. Too much. Uh, a little too much information. Um, they also, just for funsies, marked that the patient had hemorrhoids on the chart, even though they didn't. Just for fun. And there is a. Recording of this, so it went up in front of a jury. They said, What the fuck is wrong with you, lady? God damn. Somebody has a fucking axe to grind. Well, I mean, this isn't just a matter of an axe to grind. I mean, this. Your job, you are in patient care. It obviously sounds like you really don't want to be there. Why are you there? If you just want to mock people when they can't respond to you, 
Do what the rest of us do and go on the internet. It's the kind of attitude I see like 98% of people in retail having towards customers. Anesthesiology doesn't seem like that kind of thing. No! You're dealing with unconscious people for the most part. Yeah, it's not like they're they're giving you... It's God, not... that guy was such a dick when he was passed out. <laughs> Man, he just lay there, being <laughs> unconscious. What a lazy piece of shit. You know, I... For so fucking... uncooperative. Ah... Uh... Eight years. Eight years. You go to school for this shit. And this is how you come out of it. This is this is how, this is what you wanted. To, obviously, this is probably not. You know what? This says to me, this isn't what I want to do with my life. I'm going to take it out on everybody else around me. And you know, honestly, now the Internet makes a little more sense. Uh, I just, uh, well, yeah, $500,000. Oh, and yeah, she ain't got a job no more. So, good one. Though I do, I do like this. I do like these jobs, like, especially uh, it, police officers, obviously, but other jobs where they have, I've worked jobs where I've been monitored. I had, I, I did, um on-site repair and they had a gps that they tracked they tracked my phone and shit to find out where i was and stuff i've had jobs where, where it's been like that i kind of appreciate that now technology is enabling these other entitled jobs to be monitored <laughs> so they get to see how the rest of us live and it sucks for them too and you know what you fuck around you lose your job that's how things should be i like that Oh, oh, okay, speaking of fucking around. Yeah, the, the standard disclaimer here. Uh, nobody got hurt. Yay. Uh -oh. I have to... No, no one was seriously injured. That That's one of the disclaimers I have to put on this. Um, Have you worked with people you just didn't get along with? All the time. All the time. I don't, I don't know if I could, to the point where I feel like I need to attack people, but... Yeah, it's one of those, if they maybe rolled their truck over on the highway on the way to work in the morning, I might not have a slice of cake kind of deal. And and I've never, I, I would go to my superior and say something maybe, or I would just kind of be like, fuck it, I'm keeping my head down, do my job, I don't, you know, I don't have time for this shit. I would just go deal. There are many ways, we all have to deal. I would not, however, put weed killer in my co-worker's water. A Georgia man <laughs> pulled a poison prank on his hapless co-worker. Anthony Dunton poured small amounts of Roundup weed killer in his colleague's water bottle on at least four occasions. 65-year-old told Ackworth Police he didn't want to kill the unnamed victim, only, quote, mess with him. That's the part that got me. I mean, it's, it's not like he was a plant or anything. What was it going to do? It's just, it's just weed killer. What? It's not like, they didn't kill other stuff. Weed? I don't see how this could harm him. That's how that works. Just mess it with him. This, this, again, is one of those those things. Someone does something so fucking psychotic. It's total psychopathic behavior. And then when you call them on it, they're like, what? What's the big deal? What? I didn't do nothing. Some what? amazing stories in the military are basically all based on that concept of, I don't understand what was wrong. I just poured bleach down the guy's pants and burned his genitals. <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> um... Uh, the, the target was set up a hidden camera after he noticed his water tasted strange and foamed when he shook the bottle. That should, that should have been the tip off right there. Water's not foamy. The camera, to, well, unless, you know, you're in New York or something, but then, um, 
the water, the, the camera caught Denton sneaking off with the bottle on two different occasions, the warrant showed. He was filmed wiping his fingerprints off the bottle in one of the recordings. So again, this is one of those cases where technology wouldn't have caught this fucker otherwise. This is... Yeah, uh, police jail Dunton with four counts of felony assault. Coworker was treated for kidney pain, but wasn't ser seriously hurt. Thank God. What this? Yeah, yeah. T uh, totally. The channel says it's weed killer, not weed mild annoyance. That's that's not weed a prankster. <laughs> no. Just throw some on the weeds, and it's like, oh, I got you guys good. Better not come up next spring. This this is. How's that kidney pain treating you? Isn't that hilarious? Uh This this is not something this is not just like you're not gonna go around the water cooler and talk, hey, hey, you know what I did to Bob the other day? What? What, did you put a stapler in jello? No! I poisoned him! Isn't that hilarious? I poisoned his water. Not this water though. Not yet. <laughs> How I wouldn't touch this water, I drink this. How do you think you can do that sort of shit and have other people want to be anywhere? You're, that's what that be. That's the kind of behavior that makes people want to like put you someplace very far away from them and never ever interact because that that's that's some crazy shit. What the fuck were you thinking? Uh. Well, um, you're you're up in uh, Virginia, Maryland area, right? Yeah, northern Delaware. Northern, like right northern on the Delaware. Border of a couple states. Okay. So, uh, how close are you to Pennsylvania? Uh, just a couple, like maybe 40 minute drive north. Oh, good. This one's in your neighborhood. Fantastic. <laughs> My neighborhood's already gotten people shooting each other, like down the road a bit. So, the adventure just never stops. Um, When was the last wedding you went to? Wedding? Yeah. I feel like it was at least one after my own. It wasn't that long ago, was it? Let's say 2012-ish. Have, have you ever had wedding drama? Pre or post or just during even? During, during the ceremony and the, and the Where like the someone just starts and... being a... I guess I haven't been so unlucky then. I haven't been really that well known with all the people I've gone to the weddings to. It was always friends of my wife. I'm not actually... You know, I wouldn't pick up on any of that stuff. See, I've been to a few, and they've always been pretty decent affairs, and somebody maybe got a little bit drunk every once in a while, but, you know, no big, no, 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 like, you know, big deal. So that's why I don't understand stories like this, because weddings are fun for me. This, this is not fun. 16 different police departments respond to wedding brawl in Pennsylvania. So you like a wedding <clears throat> riot. You remember that scene in in um <clears throat> The Professional where yeah. where where uh uh was it Gary Olson's like get everyone. Who? Everyone. <laughs> that's how many people got that's how many cops got called up for this one. On a to oh god, I can't pronounce this. Anna Telani. Anna Telani. Knowing the East Coast, you just have to pronounce it something that sounds absolutely nothing like the word looks. I'm going to say Anna Telani. Anna Telani. I'm Anna going Telani. with it. Anna Telani Township, Pennsylvania. More than a dozen different police departments in a southeastern Pennsylvania county respond to a wedding brawl that grew violently out of control Monday night. Police arrested seven people, including the groom... During the altercation, which reportedly began over a guest letting her 14-year-old son drink alcohol. Police, uh, 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 police say the 14-year-old boy in question blew a 0.16% blood alcohol content. Those blowing a 0.08% blood alcohol content are considered legally drunk. Uh, blew a 0.16% blood alcohol and told the officers he drank two beers. Yes. Those were some big fucking beers. Or he's a small fucking 14-year-old. 0.16? <laughs> uh, 
Police say one guest was unfazed after an officer twice used a stun gun on him and the groom reportedly challenged police to fight before being subdued and charged with disorderly conduct. Okay, you've been watching way too much Game of Thrones because that trial by combat shit is not a real thing. If you beat the cop up, it doesn't mean you're not guilty. It just means the other cops are going to be madder. They're like bees. If you kill one, the others are still going to sting you. This is... What the... This is just going to go with all of them. Just take them all down. Oh, emergency workers, meanwhile, treated his bride for alcohol poisoning and dehydration. You know, we had an open bar. <laughs> I think I got the most shit-faced, and even then, I don't think I'd be able to pull that off. Jed the Jedi, my big, fat, violent wedding. <laughs> my God. The involved officers came from departments in Fleetwood, Hamburg, Penn State, Berks County, Wyoming, Burns, Spring, Tilden, Reading, and Mullenberg, among other locations. This is Jesus Christ. Well, officers from Northern Berks Regional Police are first on the scene, but they called for reinforcements after guest, some shirtless and bloodied, threatened them. This is, this is, this is like, this is like you show up and like something from a zombie apocalypse is going down. Wasn't that an episode of like Always Sunny? <laughs> like you put like meth or something in their punch bowl and then just everyone started going at it. I was like swearing they're just trying to reenact this shit. This... You gotta wonder what the wedding video is gonna look like. And why isn't that shit on YouTube already? That'd be the best wedding video ever. I mean, I'm just... I, I would be, like, remixing this shit at this point. Ah. Uh. All you need is circus music playing. You got a Wild Benny Hill episode. Yes. Oh. oh. One day after my birthday, too. Sandro says, How the fuck do you make the red wedding seem dignified? <laughs> Even George R.R. R. Martin is looking at this shit and going, Nope. Mm -mm. Nope. Nope. Final story tonight, however, is is probably one of the... Uh, okay. Have you ever had problems w between your parents and your significant other? Uh, not specifically this one, but past ones, it's a common thing. And I, when I was young, when I was in like my teens, my irrational response, obviously, was to be pissed at my parents. Even though, in hindsight, my parents had some good fucking points. But I got pissed at him. We fought and I slammed doors. I did typical teenager shit. However, this I did not do. Teen. <laughs> I didn't get the, the link. Was I I I'll broke John. the story before I make my comment, but let's just say that John. I can see a bank heist with the same rules. Just change out a couple words. Team killed a chicken every 15 minutes until mom made nice with his girlfriend. Just bust into the coop with a freaking ski mask. <laughs> Motherfuckers is gonna be nuggets. <laughs> Calling up Chick fil A, bitches. <laughs> I'm Stone County, Alabama. An Alabama teenager was arrested Thursday after he followed through on a bizarre threat to kill his mother's chicken 
unless she mended the relationship between him and his girlfriend. Somewhere, Dr. Phil went, I'm out. Chicken's known for being notoriously irreplaceable. Hayden Smith, 18, was arrested Thursday after and charged with domestic violence, third degree, and criminal mischief. Deputies say the situation started when Smith texted his mother, threatening to kill one of her chickens every 15 minutes until she contacted his girlfriend's parents and attempted to mend their broken relationship. Smith also gave his mother a deadline of noon before he started killing chickens. He also threatened to burn his mother's house down, kill any deputies that arrived on the scene, and kill himself. <clears throat> Smith that classic that escalated quickly. <laughs> This fucking chickens is stupid enough, but then it's just like, and I'm gonna burn the house down, kill some cops, and shoot myself in the head. Smith Seems like a natural progression of things. Smith then began sending his mother picture messages of each chicken he killed at 15 minute intervals, killing six in total before he was arrested. The last line of this story makes it. There's no word on Smith's current relationship status. <clears throat> this is some elaborate ass bullshit! I just feel like there were some steps that he skipped somewhere in his mind from let's just kill some chickens in a coop to let's go on a fucking cop murdering spree. Somewhere they skipped a few steps. Like, he was just... <laughs> well, clearly this chicken thing isn't gonna work. <laughs> I don't understand how in his brain he thought, okay, if you're having problems with your girlfriend, your mom and their mom are gonna make this better. That's step one that already I'm not following. Because... That, normally whenever I see parents intercede into, like, a relationship, it's some Jerry Springer bullshit. So already, we're not, we're on a, we're not on a good Little level. Pieces. Yeah. There's, it's all a game. But, we jump up here to, my solution is, if mom doesn't do this, I'm going to blackmail her with animal sacrifice. And you gotta send the pictures to prove it. I do you imagine his ass sitting there with the headless chicken taking a selfie? That's one. I feel like chicken tonight, like chicken tonight. Mother of God. Are we like what? One of five <laughs> people in this chat are gonna get that joke, Nash? Probably, yeah. And one of twelve people who don't who realize that it's not from The Simpsons? Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, yeah. <sighs> but it's, it's, I mean, it, <laughs> okay, that's awful. Totally the channel said, let's just say it. This dude is so bad with chicks. <laughs> that's, no, no, no. This is also one of those stories you don't want to tell when you're in lockup. <laughs> How'd you get here, man? <laughs> I carjack somebody. What about you? I kill a bunch of chickens to get my mom to get my girlfriend back for me. I don't know if it's one of those that would make people think you're an idiot or back away slowly. Because there's like a checklist of psychopathic behavior, the psychopath checklist. And one of those is maiming, maiming and killing small animals when you're younger. <clears throat> That's one of those steps along the this this sounds like <sighs> This sounds like a combination of psychopath and imbecile. Which, you know, everyone thinks psychopath, they think like Hannibal Lecter shit. You know, genteel and refined and intelligent and cunning. They never think that 
No, some psychopaths are complete morons. I'm just, the, the whole thing is just like killing the animals when one is young. It's almost like, I mean, clearly he is a psychopath because his mind immediately jumped about 15 steps to burn down house, kill cops, shoot self. And I'm thinking it was just like, oh yeah, I was supposed to torture animals too. Fuck, let's just get that out of here. <laughs> I want to make sure that I'm following the handbook correctly. Where was, was, was he like, at, at what point? point in this whole elaborate scheme was there going to be the you know the the the, the driving away with the, with the happy ending into the sunset everything's fine can you imagine though it's like let's say this cockamamie psychopathic steam scheme worked his mom's like you know he's a good boy he killed about six chickens but you know we make mistakes and they get back <laughs> together and they're telling their kids yeah <laughs> Almost broke up, <laughs> but I went and killed some chickens and threw them burned down the house. <laughs> we got back together, everything was cool. I the story is act like a dumb son of a bitch, you're gonna get your way. There's only been one rom com I've ever seen that involved someone with a bloody implement that ended on kind of a high note, and that was Shaun of the Dead. <laughs> Situation's a little different. All the rest of them, if there's any point in a movie where someone is coated with blood and holding a sharp implement, we're not going to end with a fairy tale. You know, you're not going to have little birds tweeting and, you know, it's, it's not going to be good. It's not going to be a good ending. It's one of those that, you know, it's got a fake out at the end where the guy comes back from the dead because it's one of those movies. Okay, all right, Demented Demon does point out, this sounds like a sequel to Raising Arizona. <laughs> well, Nick Cage will probably sign up for it. <laughs> well, yeah, what else is he doing these days? Left Behind! Good career move. Um, That's a sound decision. I guess the first thing we learned this week is... If you're having problems with your relationship, try cutting a dozen roses, not a dozen chickens! Different. Different fucking principle. We've learned that um, CNN can't tell Arabic script from dildos. World leader in news coverage. Most trusted source in news. Yep. We've learned that if a police chopper goes overhead, maybe you want to listen carefully to the instructions before you get down on the ground. Otherwise, something unfortunate could happen. <sighs> uh, we've learned... Anesthesiologists, maybe you should be having some way to pay attention to them. Generally, if you're going into a situation where you're consensually knocked out, all I'm saying is a little backup couldn't hurt. We've learned that when the bottle says weed killer, that's a hint. You've escalated a little too far too 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 far and finally tonight we've learned that uh, if your wedding takes 16 police departments to get under control your divorce proceedings are probably going to require the national guard 